Let's give this draw file some rich, intense orange tones using nothing more than Lightroom. As always, if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. As always, we are going to start in the basic panel. So let's expand it and I'm going to change the profile. This time, let's click on browse. I don't want to use the standard profiles instead. What I want to do is go down to the artistic menu right here. And here I'm going with the artistic free profile. With the profile selected, click on close and that's it for the profile. What this will do is it will shift the green tones you can see right there in the back more into a warmer color range. It also slightly affects the overall warmer tones of the image, making them look slightly more red-ish. I think that looks great and is perfect for this orange look I'm aiming for. Now you can see this whole shot is a little bit too dark. So right away I'm going to bring up the exposure, fixing that problem. Let's bring it up like that. Of course, since we're going to raise the exposure, the highlights in the sky will be clipping. Actually, looking at this, they are not clipping at this point, but I still want to bring down the highlights so we can see some more details in the very bright part of the sky. I'm going to drop them quite a bit right around minus 80. Looks pretty good. Okay, I'm still not happy with the super dark parts of the image, so I'm going to bring up the shadows and I'm also going to bring up the blacks. So maybe right around 40. Okay, that looks much, much better. We now have a lot more details, even in the darkest parts of the image. So we have nicely balanced the exposure. At this point, we can start thinking about the contrast. Looking at this, you can see we can push it a little further to the right side, introducing some more brightness. So I'm going to do that by bringing up the whites. And I think I'm quite happy with how it's looking now. I am going to work on the white balance. And for that orange look, what I want to do is to take out the blue tones of the image, especially in the sky, shift everything more into a warmer color range. So a very easy way to do that is by simply bringing up the white balance temperature, of course. So I'm going to raise it. I'm not going to go too crazy. I want to apply some subtle white balance adjustments like this. And I'm also going to bring down the tint. This will reduce the magenta tones of the image. And instead, we are getting a stronger green tint overall. I think it looks better this way. Now that we have worked on the white balance, I also want to work on these sliders down here. So let's bring up the texture, which will introduce a little more sharpness. I'm going to bring up the clarity, which will boost the midtones contrast. And then I'm going to very gently drop the dehaze to add a very, very subtle kind of autumn glow effect on top. All right, then we're almost done with the basic adjustments. Just one more thing, the colors are a little bit lacking at the moment. So I'm going to change that and let's bring up the vibrance. And I think I want this image to be super colorful. So I'm also going to bring up the saturation right away. Wonderful. So that's the image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare it to before. You can see we already have taken out some of these blue tones. Overall, the exposure looks much better. But to really make this image shine, we need to focus on a few areas more locally. And we're going to do that as always with a bit of masking. So let's open up the masking panel. Right away, I want to work on the sky here. I can simply use a linear gradient and I want to kind of target all these darker clouds without affecting kind of the horizon level of the image. Here, what I want to do is to add more punch to the clouds. That means I'm going to bring up the contrast, making the darker areas of the clouds darker while making the brighter areas brighter. That's also the reason why I don't want to cover the bright spot right here with this linear gradient. Then I am going to add a little bit of texture just to make the cloud structure more visible. I'm also going to add some clarity for the same effect, also adding some more punch this way. And I want to further take out the blue parts of the sky by bringing up the temperature just a little bit like that. Beautiful. I do think I want to use another mask on the sky. So let's create another linear gradient just for the very top right here. Here I want to make this area a lot darker. And I'm doing this by bringing down the shadows. And I'm also going to drop the blacks a little bit just to add this kind of vignetting effect. I think this looks great. Let's bring it down like that. Wonderful. We could even bring down this linear gradient a little further like this. Okay, then let me introduce a glowing spot. I'm using a radial gradient for that as always. And I'm going to make it nice and big like that. I'm going to rotate it slightly to kind of fit the shape of this bright cloudless spot in the sky. 
I'm making sure the center of this radial gradient lies outside of the image to get a more natural glow effect. And I'm also making sure it's overlapping the trees right here at the bottom. To add the glow effect, all I need to do is to bring up the blacks. Let's raise them a lot because I like how this looks. And we can make it even stronger by simply pulling down the dehaze. Again, I'm going to create a heavy glow effect in here. So I'm going to drop the dehaze a lot. You can see it's a very, very strong glow effect, but I think it looks really, really good. The only thing I'm missing here is some color. So I'm going to change it by bringing up the temperature, bringing back these warm tones in this glow effect. That's perfect. Then it's time to work on the foreground. Again, I'm starting with a simple linear gradient, kind of covering everything in the foreground except that bright part in the water. And in here, let us bring up the contrast. I'm also going to slightly drop the shadows, making the foreground look a bit more dramatic this way. Then for more contrast, I'm going to bring up the whites. This will especially help with the subject right here, making it a little brighter. I'm also going to add a bit of texture and some clarity just to give the foreground more pop. Of course, we can work on the subject itself. So let's do that. I'm going to use a select objects mask for that. As always, I'm using the rectangle select mode because that will give us way more precise results in my experience. And with that, all I need to do is to draw a rectangle around that boat. And you can see Lightroom is perfectly selecting it. We do get the reflection selected as well. I don't think it's a big deal. So let's make the subject pop a little more by bringing up the whites. I am also going to add texture and some clarity. And I do want to make it a little bit warmer. So I'm going to bring up the white balance. And just like this, we could even raise the saturation a bit. Let's see, I'm going with something around 14. Okay, nice. Then one more thing I want to do is to make the boardwalk right here in the foreground a little brighter. I'm going to use a linear gradient with a super hard edge. So something like this. I'm going to bring up the exposure. All right, let's also add a lot of texture because that works great with things like this, where you can see the texture of the wood. And let's also bring up the clarity a notch. Beautiful. So that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks so we, so we can see the difference from before to after. Now we have this really nice glow effect and the focus lies way more on the subject, which is exactly what we want. Now we can start thinking a little more about the colors, which still are lacking a little bit. So let's head out of the masking menu. I want to open up the color mixer tab. Here, let's first go into the hue panel because I want the blue tones of this boat to look a little bit different. Actually, those aren't blue tones, then this is more the aqua color tone. So I'm going to click on the aqua hue slider and I'm going to bring it up, turning the aqua tones more into a blue color. And I'm doing this because I want to have a little bit of color contrast between the blue board and, and the rest of the image, which is mostly orange. Now let's head over into the saturation tab. And here is where I can get rid of most of the blue tones. I'm simply going to pull down the blue saturation slider quite a bit like this. All right, this will desaturate the sky. And to counter that, I'm going to bring up the orange tones as well as the yellow tones. Let's also bring up the green tones for the trees in the back. And I do want to bring up the aqua tones for the boat. Beautiful. That's looking much better already. But of course, we can continue with split toning. So let's open up the color grading panel. Here, I want to make use of the highlights and the global color wheel to add a really, really warm color tone to everything. Let's start with the highlights. And as I mentioned, I'm choosing a warm hue somewhere around here. And I'm going to pump up the saturation which will nicely stylize this image. We can further boost this using the global color wheel. So let's click on global. And again, I'm choosing a warm color tone right around here. And let's bring up the saturation a bit. Perfect. Then one more thing to do about the colors in the calibration tab. Here, what I do for most of my images is to simply bring down the blue primary hue and bring up the saturation because I really like what this does to the colors. But for this image in particular, I do want to play around a little bit more. And I don't have a system adjusting these sliders. I just always play around with them and see what looks good. 
I'm going with an increased red primary hue and I'm going to drop the green primary hue, which I think looks the best for this shot. And there we have the color grading for this image done. Looking so much better and way more intense. Now, of course, the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details panel. So let's do this. We want to bring down the radius. We want to increase the details all the way up. Let's apply some masking while holding down the Alt key. You can see we can nicely target the only in the important areas of this image. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening like this. Okay, at this point we can see a few sensor spots. So let's clean them up. We're going to use the remove tool. Here we want to choose the heal mode. We can click on visualize spots to make them more visible. If you don't see as many spots, we can bring up this slider right here. And then I'm just going to adjust the brush size and paint over all these spots. All right, and that's it. Here we have the finished image. I hope you like the outcome here. Let me know what you think about this image. If this was helpful for you, maybe also subscribe to this channel if you are not already are subscribed. And thank you so much for watching this video.